Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Radio General, a new game out on Steam that's currently in early access. This is a really unique game that allows you to play through World War II as a commander of Canadian soldiers, uh, but you are back at your command tent. You don't actually see your soldiers fighting, you just get radio reports from your soldiers, and this is a game that basically is about moving counters and uni units around on a map, but the unique thing is that you're dealing with sometimes imperfect information, sometimes hunches or guesses, and you really have to do your best to guide your soldiers to victory, but without being there in person. You're not on the battlefield on the back of a horse. You are in a command tent in the rear, and uh, you are, you know nonetheless still responsible for the soldiers of yours at the front. This is a game I've been enjoying quite a lot. We are uh, looking at episode number six today of a Let's Play series that I've been playing through. The footage from this series was actually taken from a live stream from a couple of days back on my Twitch channel, uh, and we've just won the Battle of Ortana, which is uh, historically, uh, or Ortano, or, or I always mispronounce the name of the city. It's an Italian city that was very famous in, in Canadian lore because it was uh, a, a big battle that the Italians fought largely on their own on the coast of Italy, the east coast of Italy, and uh, it was a very rough um, sort of city battle. Uh, but it, it features prominently and is one of the most well-documented in Canadian history, anyway, battles uh, in World War II for the Canadians. That being said, this was taken from a live stream. As I said, uh, we are moving on to the attack on the Gustav line, uh, and um, I'll leave it there. We'll just pick this up from the live stream, and I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get going. The Gustav line. Rome lies at the end of the... Rome lies at the end of the Leary River Valley. Between it and us is a number of defensive lines, lines that have been re that have repulsed attacks from British and Indian troops. The Canadians have been secretly transported across the mountains to help break the line. Tanks and artillery are used to aid Indian units in an all-out assault. Nick McCracken, thanks for the follow. Okay. So that's the Battle of the Gustav Line. Warm and heartfelt is the word. Damn straight. No general cares more about the life of his soldiers than yours truly. Welcome to the Gustav Line. Western Italy en route to Rome. Ancient history. German defensive lines. Western Al Ap Apennines. Leary River. The Leary River Valley is an area rich with history and dotted with trees. The river valley is rich with water crossing... The territory. Oh my god, I can't read. Aquano is the largest center in the area. The valley is also the birthplace of St. Thomas Aquinas. Okay. Devastating Martini Barlow Aerial Bomb. Okay. A separate section of the Fighting Forces Gum Card series and the American World in Arms series, of which it was based. Okay. The Abbey was officially not part of the German defenses and had both the Vatican and Allies had not been warned by the Germans that they were not using it. Wait. The Abbey was officially not part of the German defenses and had both the Vatican and the Allies had been warned by the Germans that they were not using it and to leave it out of the fighting. Unfortunately, due to the close proximity of the German troops, the Abbey was bombed. Some civilians who survived the bombing included He Abbot Later. Huh? Okay. New Garand automatic rifle. Did the British or did the Canadians use the Garand? I assume they used an Enfield. In any event, let's watch our film and then get going. One of the big features of the warfare in Italy, as on every other front, is the psychological warfare carried on by both sides. These pamphlets, with news of the Russian breakthrough in the Pripyat marshes, will make rather startling reading for the German soldier who has been lulled into a false belief that all is well on the Eastern Front. This may not be the safest way to deliver the morning paper, but it's very effective. In 
In the cemetery overlooking the town of Azura, scene of the grimmest fighting the Canadians encountered in Sicily, a memorial cross has been erected. It commemorates the gallantry of the men who gave their lives in the Sicilian campaign. Far from the shores of their beloved country, it is a place that will remain forever Canada. Peacetime travel posters invite you to sunny Italy where beauty and romance abound. Beautiful roads winding through country unsurpassed for scenery. Well, this is Italy, and here is some of the scenery, and this is the romance. The sun has probably been taken over by the Nazis. At a divisional cooking school somewhere in Italy near the front line, cooks of Canadian regiments on the Italian front are taking a refresher course. and hardtack are a thing of the past as these boys of the kitchen front learn all the latest wrinkles in slapping out a batch of buns. Mm, buns. This process is called camouflaging the bully beef. And to the boys in the field, these meat pies are tops. Part of the course was instruction in making improvised ovens from old bricks, gasoline tins, etc. They might not look so hot, but they do the job. Something tells me no meat pies were the tops for soldiers. Like, we're using this to camouflage the beef. Wait, what? Okay. All right, so this is a slightly smaller battle, but we get a lot more armor. So we have snipers, we have uh, artillery, then we have tanks, tanks, and artillery. So, lots of arty, that's always good. Um, the snipers is new. We haven't done snipers before, so we've got sneaky or we've got cautious. Our sneaky snipers, the sneaky snipers, are the good kind. Five kilometers, seven. Defense 30, defense 30. I'm going to go with the Princess Patricia snipers. They have... Well, what? Why was I going to go with them again? They both have ten troops. They're probably mostly going to just be like... I mean, actually, maybe we should go with the Calgary guys because they have better sight range, 2.9 versus 2.5. And I think it's this one's probably going to be just more about, like, calling artillery down on guys. So these guys are going to kind of be like our scouts. Okay, artillery. We'll go with the more experienced guys first. The other artillery will be the, the less experienced guys. So these guys, the two chevrons versus the one who haven't fought before. The Fort Gary horse tanks. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. We only have, well, we have more than one armored unit actually. So the Fort Gary is the experienced one. So obviously we'll go with them first. And then it's either sneaky or zealous. So these guys damage. Damage is equal, defense is equal, speed is not, attack range is equal. Like how would, how would these guys, and these guys have, the zealous troops are obviously better. Okay, well I guess we'll see what happens here, I'm curious. If you take a look at this battlefield here, you can see division strength, 800 to 1500 infantry, 2 to 5 anti-tank and artillery batteries possible. Jesus, what am I attacking with? Expect each fortification marked on the map to be garrisoned. They might have other hidden... Why don't I have any infantry? Sending artillery... Sending tanks in against anti-tank guns with no infantry? That's great. They might have other hidden units along the road. Riverside towns will be very heavily defended. Use your snipers to tag as many enemies as possible. There are two routes of advance. Carefully choose which to send your tanks on and which, which to aid with artillery. 
Do not engage anti-tank guns with your tanks. Allied unit positions are automatically updated, so watch and follow them carefully. Oh, so there's probably, like, other infantry units that, uh, that are not part of my force. I think they said Indian troops that I'd be supporting. So this looks like a fortification up here. Uh, what, a, what is our objective again? We need to take San Angelino and Cassiano. Or, or sorry, Casino. Jesus Christ. Casino is up here. That'll be easy, I'm sure. And San Angelino down here. So they're two opposite sides. Oh boy, arguments about Montgomery in the in the chat over there. Um, all right, so San Angelino. I probably go for Angelino first. So probably cross this way, although that means moving across a wooded terrain on both flanks, which I'm not exactly thrilled about. We'll have to see. I'm not. I'm not sure how this is going to play out. The main assault force will arrive soon. Use your sniper to scout along the roads and artillery to soften up enemies. Do I not have any reserves in this one? I don't think I do, actually. I just have to go with, with whatever. All right, let's smoke our pipe first. Mmm, yes, mmm. Have a little bit, of, uh, little bit of alcohol while we smoke our pipe. Can I get drunk? Is that like a thing? No? Everything gets all hazy, though, when I drink. I don't get what this mechanic is for. Let's just get sloshed. <laughs> all right. Oh, nice. I get to have the pipe in my mouth. All right. So... I think Abel's just going to move to Lima 6. That's the high ground. Maybe they'll be able to tag some enemy units up there. Abel, move to Lima 6. Lima 6. Wait. I also saw infantry. The tag disappeared too quick. What was the report again? Able report status. Able here. We are at fight five. We're headed to Lima six. We can see infantry at fight eight. Got a visual on alligator at fight two. Able fire. Oh, Baker fire barrage at Mike two. Baker here. Roger. Dropping shells on five. Got my snipers are engaging something. Baker here. Bombardment clause and target. Baker fire barrage at Mike 8. Baker here. Artillery firing at Mike 8. I don't know how much artillery, like, ammo we have. Able report status. Baker report status. Baker here. We are at up on five. Baker fire barrage at Mike 8. Baker here. Coordinates confirmed. Firing barrage at I 8 3. Come on, guys. I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Able report status. Able here. We're at Lima. Baker here. I'm going to report that did some real damage. All right. Able move to Lima 4. Able here. Lima 4. It is. See, this infantry isn't mine. The infantry that's going to come out of mine. Spotted infantry. We can see alligator at Lima 2. Baker fire barrage at Lima 2. Baker here. Rain thunder down on Lima 2. 2. 
Able report status. Nice. Baker here. Forward of service report. That fire mission was successful. Able report status. Able here. We're at Lima 4. Spotted Tita at Juliet 2. Baker, fire barrage at Juliet 2. Baker here. Roger. Dropping shout on Juliet 2. 1. So I think these guys move autonomously without my, my input. Able, move to Juliet 4. Able here, to Juliet 4. Green units are not under your control to move along Ordinary the road. Baker here. Yeah, that was the direct head. Charlie, move to Lima 3. All right, head to Red, Lima 3. Baker, fire barrage at Juliet 2. Baker here, coordinates confirmed. Shit. Fire barrage at Juliet 2. Boy, command post. Drag the command post to where you know friendly and enemy troops are. Click the established command post to aid your AI infantry when they're in combat. Okay. Able report status. That an enemy company is pulling out. Charlie report status. Charlie here. We're at Papa. Hi. We're in route to Lima. Three. Okay, good. Baker, I want you to move along the northern route here. Baker here. Able, move to India 4. Able here, head to India 4. Able here, spotted infantry battalion at Casino. Able here, we can see there at Gulf 5, heading north east. Able here, we're here at India 4. Baker, fire barrage at location 3. Baker here, no good news. We are completely out of show. Well, why didn't you tell me you were low on ammo? Charlie, report status. Charlie, report status. Papa, three. We're at Papa, three. We're heading to Lima, three. Shit. I need more artillery. Give me goddamn artillery. Able report status. Charlie, report status. Charlie here. We're at November 3. We're en route to Lima 3. Charlie, move to India 3. Charlie here. Over to Greg, India 3. Fox, report status. Why is my my sniper doing the all the work down here? Why are the troops in the south not advancing? So we took out the anti-tank guns in the north. Charlie, report status. Great. I can't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I can't counter battery fire. Fox, move forward. Baker, report status. Baker here. We are at Papa 5. Baker, fire barrage at location 3. Baker here. No good We are completely out of shells. Well, that would have been nice to know. So now I'm just going to kind of sit here and let my men die while I wait for the reinforcements. God damn it. Casino is the objective I've, I've committed myself to. There's infantry on both flanks, but I don't have artillery right now. George looks like they're probably pinned down down there in the south. Charlie, report status. Sounds like more tools in the Well, we got more infantry coming up in the north. Able report status. Charlie, report status. Nice. 
Another battalion in the south. We've got 12 minutes left. Dog, move to India 3. More artillery is coming in. Able report status. Charlie, report status. Where the hell are these guys? Dog, report status. Get the hell up there. I need that artillery. I think we drove off bear. Able report status? Alright, so the infantry is going to attack the towns. I don't have any support in the south, so those guys are kind of probably doomed. Dog report status. They're both up here. Able move. Able move to hotel four. Dog, move to India 3. Charlie, report status. Assault the damn town! Move in, boys! Charlie, move to Hotel 3. Dog, move to Hotel 3. Charlie, move to lo golf two. Sorry. Charlie, move to location three. Abel, move to location two. Dog, move to location two. Easy, fire barrage at location two. Easy, move to kilo eight. Charlie, report status. Dog, report status. Easy, report status. Easy. Easy fire barrage at Echo 4. Dog move to Echo 4. Charlie report status. Able report status. Easy fire barrage at location two.
Dog, move to location two. Charlie, move to location two. Dog, report status. Easy, fire barrage at Delta 5. Gotta take those anti-tank guns out. Oh, friendly fire! Friendly fire! Charlie, report status. There's too much blood. You're in your damn tank. What do you see? Abel, move to location three. The troops in the north aren't garrisoning the town. Easy fire barrage at location two. I've got five minutes left. I want to take this fucking town. Nice. Dog, move to a location three. I don't even know where the enemy is anymore. I can't really keep up with where they're located. Charlie, report status. Dog report status. Easy fire barrage at Echo 7. Oh, I'm going to drop that on my own troops. Fuck! Easy cancel barrage. Where is the enemy? We've captured both. Charlie, move to location three. They're bombarding location two, but I don't see any... Charlie report status. Really, are you? How many tanks did you lose? They're just hitting the, the southern objective. There's three minutes left. Well, I probably managed to butcher a lot of our own men, but I think we took the objectives. Alright, before we do that, let's keep track. There's a battalion, so there's two infantry. In terms of what we spotted, that's three infantry, one artillery, one anti tank. Now, there might have been more back at location one that we didn't spot. Can't keep track of all the shit. Alright, so we'll see maybe two anti tank guns, one artillery, one armor, and then four infantry. Root? Full blown route, buddy. Route. A root! We rooted the enemy while we were smoking a pipe. So, I think we said four infantry, one tank, one artillery, two anti-tank guns, I'm hoping. You've got a lot of letters to write home, sure. Nice! Guessed it all right! We took both objectives, casualties are no issue here, another major victory. We lost 34% of our command. 
Apparently, I don't have to worry about the AI squads. So the squads of ours, the snipers, the artillery, and then the two tank units and the artillery. Now, we'd probably benefit from a casualty perspective because the artillery never took fire. Um, so you can see here, several units leveled up multiple times. Whoa, Abel really got leveled up. They lost one man, one wounded out of their force, the snipers. Uh, the artillery lost no men, the Royal Canadian Artillery. Charlie and Dog Company both lost 15 men out of 20, so probably lost three tanks out of out of four. Dog lost five men, so probably one tank out of four. So four total tank losses out of a force of eight. That's 50% casualties in the armored formations. Um, meanwhile, Easy lost no men, but they were exhausted. Both artillery units used a lot of our used a lot of RD up. Actually, Baker leveled all the way up to some royal crown thing. Meanwhile, the AI companies uh, lost, or battalions lost 22%, so 20 KIA here, 79 KIA here, 20 here, and I don't know what item is. <laughs> another unit, another battalion. These boys lost 48%. Total men deployed 1,710, 597 casualties, 187 KIA, 93 missing, 317 wounded. 900 and, or sorry, yeah, 922,267 rounds expended. The enemy, meanwhile, had multiple units wiped out. They lost 68% out of 1,100 men. So 187 versus 206, 93 versus 106, 317 versus 459. So the enemy still lost more. We need to award someone a medal, I think. So I think we'll give that award to Charlie because of the heavy casualties they lost. A major victory. Okay. Post office telegram breaking the line May 11th, 1944. The German troops had heavily fortified the area as it formed a bottleneck and was a direct route to Rome. The defensive system consisted of pillboxes, tank turrets, and heavy use of barbed wire and minefields. Although small victories did happen, this fortification was able to hold throughout the winter. The Canadians moved to the location in late April and began assault, assisting the Allies in their efforts. St. Joseph. The tag, which would typically have been pinned to the tunic, indicated the Lieutenant Sams was being evacuated to England from 10 Canadian General Hospital with a slight leg wound. Disposal tag AFW 3083, revised Lieutenant Joseph Sam Royal Hamilton Light Infantry. Okay. You can see these are prisoners of the Germans uh, that were captured at the Gustav Line. Rations. Radio stuff. Or is it artillery? Signals office, so probably radio. Year for Canucks in Italy was one of tough fighting. Look back on slow but valuable northward advance of 190 miles. I wish the text was a little bit larger so I could read it. But let's go ahead and jump into the Maple Leaf film, one of our last films of the night. To the Canadians in the Italian front lines, this is the story of the most important newspaper in the world. During the long, wearisome trek through Sicily and up the spine of Italy, news was irregular. Canadians had to content themselves with what they could get from American or British Army newspapers and letters from home. At the start of this year, however, permission was secured to found an all-Canadian sheet, a paper of, by, and for Canadian troops, one which would bring news of their own front as well as stories of their comrades in other theaters of action, home news, and general items on the conduct of the war. A staff was gathered together from the various field units in Italy and from Canadian Base Reinforcement Group. All these servicemen had held positions on newspapers in the various parts of the Dominion before the war. Presses were commandeered from the Italians. An American linotype machine was unearthed. The casting machine and the stereotype were made in Germany for Italian pre-war use. The operators had a difficult time getting used to this strange collection of foreign equipment. Canadian ingenuity triumphed after much study and application. 
liaison with the American paper Stars and Stripes and the British paper The Union Jack brought newsprint from a big pool. The editorial officers moved into the same building as the other two sheets near Naples. News sources were lined up. All the machinery of a big newspaper commenced functioning. The Maple Leaf rolls off the presses. It is important that a maple leaf should be available to every soldier from front lines to base areas. The circulation department attends to this important job. Not only do they keep track of the movements of all units day by day, but they see that the paper reaches the reader the same day it is printed, while the headlines are still new. This gigantic task is handled by a staff under the direction of a well-known Dominion newspaper man. Trucks move the bundles of papers to a nearby airfield. A transport plane carries them up to an advanced landing ground. They are transshipped by lorry to the field post office just behind the lines. The shipment is sorted by postal corps clerks and is loaded on the various ration runs. Then by unit arrangement, the papers are distributed to each soldier in the front lines. On forward gun position or on the now peaceful streets of Naples, the publication is available. The Canadian soldier may read the latest war news, see baseball scores, or laugh at cartoons. He knows what goes on the same as his family at home. His brothers in arms devote their talents to bringing him news, hot news, published by Canada's fighting man's paper, the Maple Leaf. The Maple Leaf, oh yes, indeed, indeed. All right, well, that's going to do it for the Gustav line battle. Free plays unlocked there. And the next battle is the Battle of the Hitler line. The entrance to the Leary River Valley is now open, but we are faced with an even more formidable defensive line. The Hitler line is composed of concrete bunkers, barbed wires, minefields, and powerful anti-tank panther term turrets. Clear minefields with engineers, and then crack the line with the full might of the Canadian Corps. That, next time on The Historical Gamer Plays Video Games. <laughs> Sorry, I don't normally do that dramatic a voice. Um, I'm curious to see if these, uh, oh, not what I was looking for. I'm curious to see if our casualty report reflects the casualties lost by non-Canadian units, and it does! By the way, yours truly has now killed 380 Canadian soldiers, although I guess some of these are not actually Canadians. Um, although they all seem to have relatively Canadian names, so maybe they are Canadian soldiers. I thought they were Indians, but in any event. 380 casualties inflicted by yours truly, or received by yours truly. 200 missing in action. They don't count wounded, so apparently if you're nicked and uh, are okay, you don't, you don't get counted. Or if you lose a limb, you don't count either, apparently. Um, but 380 KIA, 200 MIA. Um, with that being said, guys, uh, we are, I think, I'm assuming this is the last battle in the Italian theater, and then we're going to move to uh, the invasion of France, or the liberation of France. But that next battle will be for another time. I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and cut this one off. I hope you guys enjoyed yet another video of Radio General. Uh, this is a game that I think you can tell as I'm playing through it, I'm having quite a lot of fun. Uh, and I think is really interesting. It's actually done pretty well on my Twitch channel as well in terms of viewership, so it seems like there's a lot of interest. So I will probably continue to play this, but I really want to see what all your thoughts are and kind of uh, feel free to leave those down below. Uh, with that being said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this one up, though, so I do hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.